a situation, a circumstance, you lose your job, you're in a pandemic, your health is failing. Bottom line, you have to respond without light. That should terrify you. Because you're guessing, you're assuming a 9 out of 10, yeah. because you're in such darkness, you're going to miss the mark. You're going to make the situation worse. Meaning the response is inappropriate according to the task or the text. You ever sometimes, the thing only need one ounce or two ounces of power, but because you can't really tell what's behind it, you give it ten times and destroy the whole wall. Yeah. And then you're always apologizing and feeling guilty and shame. Go, I absolutely overreact. I totally underestimate or overestimate this situation. And the reason we do this is the absence of what? Light. Things are not visible. Things are not clear. If I see it clear, why would I put more power than I needed to? Why would I say more than I need to? Or why would I, how many times you said something but you didn't say enough because you didn't quite see the person or the context and when they're gone you go, I should have said everything I needed to say. Yeah. If I knew, I would have said more. In hindsight, I should have told the truth. And the reason we make this mistake is the absence of what? Light. Or not enough light. You, may have, you might have some visibility but not absolute what? Visibility. David knew right away, he, he's not going to get back some of it. He's going to get back what? All of it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's go back to Ephesians chapter 5. So as the Bible teaches, you know, where light is, everything is made visible and clear. Verse 14 says, Therefore, he say, awake, O sleepers, and arise from the dead. Amen. And Christ shall shine, make day dawn. Amen. Where everything become clear once you awake to realize you need light to, to respond to life. Amen. Shall, Christ shall shine, make the day dawn upon you and give you light. You have to realize you have to make decisions every day. One of the, it's a fortunate thing, but sometimes one of the unfortunate things, Life is about making decisions. We talked about this last week. This decision from the time you start to leave primary school or junior, junior school. Which school I'm going to go? Which course I'm going to take? This course has to be based on, on what future shall I live? Because I want to take the course. Because sometimes I guess why sometimes many of us, you know, sometimes I have a few people I know. And sometimes we, you know, we call them like, you're a student for life. In this sense, meaning they keep going back to school again and again. Because they keep finding out the courses they take. And they graduate from, that's not the one they want to do with life. And the reason they're making this mistake and have to double back in a time when they should be starting family and career, but they're going, no, this is what he said, they're career student. Meaning they're always going back to school. Because they're finding out at the end of it, this is not suitable for where they want to go. This mistake happened because of the absence of what? Right. Light. David would not have go after the Amalekites if he didn't get light. And then he would have lost his family and everything, just sit there feeling depressed. His men would have probably stoned him, he probably would have killed himself, because what's the point of living? But because he has light, he can respond appropriately and effectively. It's not just responding to the situation, it should be what? Effective. But this can only happen. And the church Christ has put, because there are many situations, there are many Amalekites, many raids going to happen in your life. On your health, on your family, on your beliefs, on your thoughts, on your words. Sometimes we go, why does this happen? And that's just life. Life is happenings. If you want to put it in context, they're good happenings and they're challenging or bad happenings. But that's, neither one of them is there. Whether it's good or bad, here's the question. You can have great situation and you mess it up because your response is what? Inappropriate. It's true. How many of us have had great people coming in our life? And we just mess up the relationship. How many of you have had great opportunity at jobs, at school, amen? Great moments in your life. But because you didn't know to respond, you just desolate it. Because you didn't have enough light to see it in the right context and to respond according, amen, to how it needed to be responded to. Hallelujah. So the Bible says light makes things visible. And when you believe in Jesus, he draw near and he'll make day dawn upon you. Meaning you always have light over you and in you. And in this state, now God makes a charge in you, the church. He go, now because you have day dawning upon you, meaning you always have light. He go, no matter what situation, good or bad, if you want to put it in that context, he go, you will have light to respond to it appropriately. And I expect you 
on the day of Christ, he will hold the church accountable. Why didn't you respond according to the dawn of day? Why didn't you respond according to light? How could you leave this situation? Or why did you respond like a confused person when you operate in light? And the reason why you do it sometimes is because you did not abide in the light. Because, the, 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 you know, if you know what a yoke is, I grew up on a farm and, 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 and um, what we do with, 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 with animals, we put a yoke on them to put two animals together. You see, so you can put two animals together, it, 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 it's like a, we use like a piece of wood, one, top, uh, one on top, one at the bottom, with two divided part. It's almost think of it as two car wheel and you use this, the, um, um, axle. the axle to connect them together. Amen? And the steering wheel controlling it. The, 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 the two control arms keep the two wheel connected to the, to the steering wheel. Amen? Well, yokes works kind of the same. Now you can have a yoke on one animal and connect it to a cart. Amen? Or you can have a yoke on two animals, etc. But it connects you to something. So Jesus said, you know, the yoke you have to wear, you have to wear the yoke that connects you to the source, to me, the light. And then you will have the day, because I am, I'm, I am I'm the bright morning star, you will have light now to respond to the happening of light. You see, sometimes we don't want to stay, this is where the church went into trouble sometimes, we don't want to stay connected or abiding in the yoke. But we want to have the ability to respond to life. Or, 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 or we want this. Because we're not staying in the yoke of light, amen, we are hoping challenging situation. no Amalekites don't attack our life so we don't have to respond. Life is part of growing in life, to have the experiences of life that is necessary, amen, is to respond to the happenings of life. Once you are born, you are born to overcome certain subjects. In the book of, of Lamentation, the Bible says, why does man complain? Have he forgot this is the school of life, the school of discipline? He is in school. And part, in, in any school, there has to be curriculum. There has to be subject for he or she to what? Overcome. Amen? So life is about happenings. It comes in form of people, situation, pandemics, seasons, forces. But you are designed, amen, not away from God, with light to respond to it appropriately. In Jesus' name. And then you'll get the appropriate effect of it too. But inappropriate respond also bring inappropriate effect. Amen. In Jesus' name. So let, let, let's, let's continue. So... Um, Amen. Now, I want to speak here from the perspective of the church, and, 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 but I'm speaking also to the church and the world, because I want the world to know what to expect from the church, how she, and why you should pray for her and encourage her, and for the church to know the importance of abiding, that she can glorify God, and live effective life. As I said, there's no fun living a life, you know, when an Amalekite attack, you don't have an appropriate response, or you're responding inappropriately. Both is terrible if you can't respond or if the response is wrong. Life is only excited and filled with passion and inspired and work living to me when your response to the challenges are appropriate. And as I said, in my experience and, and looking at history, open that the challenge, Amalekites won't attack. It's not an option. God himself assigned it that the rain comes on the just and the unjust. He goes, it's coming. The only difference is response. That's the only thing different. Amen? In, in the name of Jesus. One of the assignments of operating in the day or operating in the light, because you can see things in its true light or in its proper context, one of, the, 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 uh, Satan is the first one to run the kingdom of darkness. He likes to control people from them not being able to see how to respond appropriately. For him to keep you in frustrate you, you need to make the things that come... You can't control the things that come in your life. But if you're in darkness, you can't respond. You don't know how to respond. And if you do respond, it's inappropriately. So, so the effects of that is what really... Like, like, like if David could have seen before that if he leave his people, the Amalekites will attack, he won't go. Amen? He was fortunate he know to respond after. He should have asked before. Amen? So we need to know how to respond to the various challenges of life. To see things in its context. One, the number one charge on the church, this is, this is what Matthew 5 is about and Philippians 2 is about. You are a light in this dark and crooked world. You are the salt, you are the light in Matthew 13 and 14. When situation happen, God wants to show, God made everything, the Bible teaches in the book of Genesis and he said, he made everything and it was good. He made man and he got, he's very good. He see good. Man is designed, this is the man I'm talking, man pre-sin, before he sinned. 
You may, when you look at things, you see things good. In the world, we call them, some people are positive, and we say some people are very positive, and we say some people are very negative. We say some people are optimistic, and some are optimists, and some people are very, well, they're pessimists. They can always see everything wrong. Well, the, the evil one, the devil, wants you to see everything wrong. Part of to make you stay in that darkness is for you to feel life will never get better. I'll never be able to respond to situation properly. I'll never get good effect. There's no good person in the world. Nothing good ever happened. And what's happening, like the Pharisees or Sadducee, everything you look at, you know, you, you, you can never see the goodness of it. No, everything God made is good. It is truth we contaminated thing and evil got in and sneer a lot. Nevertheless, there's still a lot of good in the world. In fact, I believe it's mostly good still. We don't respond good, but the things within themselves are still what? Good. How we use them and move them, that's a whole different story. So God has put the church in where it can put context. Now when it look at the situation, look at a circumstance, and this is one of the major tasks of the church, is to point out all the goodness that God has created. Uh, even in this pandemic, it is challenging, yet there's much goodness still happening. A chance for us to support each other and work together and pray for each other and call forth light. A part of the God being the light is the healer. Amen. He's the authority of the world and us and everything. So he can remove the pandemic. So it's an excellent time of praying. And the church has been charged to always see the goodness of God. She lives in the pleasure of God by abiding. And she is supposed to look at the situation to see the hands of God and the goodness of God in every situation, in every circumstance, in every family. This is one of her major. The church can never become the pessimist. The church who sees it, she don't even really have to be an optimist. She sees the goodness and she should have no option. If that's something she's trying, it's where she's placed. It is our job to see the goodness in humanity. It is our job, more important, to see the goodness of God. Amen? It is our job to see, amen, all of God's goodness that He is trying to shine through and extend. To see God's Son, Jesus, amen, the greatest goodness extend to humanity, the unchurch, and where the church lives in and abides in and enjoying the pleasures. The major task of, of the church being the light is to make things visible and echo, amplify, testify to the goodness of God. So for you, the unchurch, you need the church in this time and to be praying and, and asking God to let her operate effectively for, for she to show the goodness of God in such a time and in every time. And it's imperative the church see the goodness of God because she's positioned in the light. If she's not seeing it, she's breaking the yoke. The Bible teaches in, in Isaiah, they have throw off the yoke. Anytime you're not seeing the goodness of God, you're either throwing off the yoke or you're rebelling. You're either rebelling so you can't operate in the good, amen, or you have thrown off the yoke, the light that allows you to see the goodness. So when you look, all you can see is darkness. Amen. The enemy wants man to see amen, all the ugliness because he knows once man is seeing all the ugliness of life and in himself, it does not promote the best quality response of a person. Amen. But when man can see the goodness of God and what it is to be regenerated in the image of God through Jesus Christ, the best quality of man can... When I speak a man, I'm thinking mankind, humanity, men and women. The best quality of man can come forth. And the things we believe and the things we think and speak and act and participate becomes of the greatest quality. But when we're not seeing it, so we do not do live from that position and navigate from those waters. Amen. Don't let the enemy pull you in darkness that when you look at people and you look at things and circumstance, all you can see is the worst of humanity. Because such a position and respond to life will not bring a world that nobody will enjoy. Amen. So God has left his ecclesia, his church, his ecclesia to live in the light, in the goodness and to testify of the goodness. She must testify. The Bible says we overcome by the blood that got us into the light and the testimony. So the blood is the one who atoned for all the wrong we have done and brought us into the covenant of the light. Amen. So we can testify of the goodness of the light. And for the unchurch, it is time for you to accept Jesus to get the blood, to atone for all the wrong, to learn to abide in the light so you can see the goodness 
that God has placed you in and in your life. To understand how to operate in the good spirit and in good beliefs and good thoughts and good words and good conversation and see the good of your community and the good amen, of humanity and, amen, and the good way how to live and how to move. Don't let the enemy only point out the ugliness of life. Mm. Life do consist of both simultaneously and there is a decision or a choice to be made. But if you're in darkness, you can, you can guess and go, I believe there's goodness, you can believe in it, but you can't experience it because you're not operating from the place to habitually, amen, experience that. That is called wishing and hoping. But it should be substantiate, meaning actuality, that I'm living in the light and experiencing, the Bible call it the fruits of light. And we'll look at that in a bit. What are the fruits of light? Does light have a manifested side? Meaning the fruits is the effect. What are the effects of light? We know the effects of darkness. It's terrible. It's terrible. You don't know what's going on, which makes you anxious, makes anxiety go to a 10, and it makes the people around you. You know, I think I shared with you guys last week, I was in, I was in Costco, and two ladies start fighting. Nine o'clock in the morning for nothing. And the reason is they're both, you could tell, they're in a very anxious state already. So the slightest thing sets them off. They're on edge. Yeah. They're on edge. Yeah. Amen? In, in the name of Jesus. So it is time for the church, even during this pandemic, to shine as the beacon, the star. To see God's goodness. And to share God's goodness. And to encourage the unchurched. To enter the goodness and to see the goodness, the number one goodness, Jesus Christ. Why is, he, why is the goodness? He's the Son of God, the authority that atoned for the misdoing, all the wrongdoing of man. And to bring man back into the light. Amen. Where he can learn to respond appropriately, he or she, amen, to the various challenges of life. And life is full of challenge. Mm. Amen. Life is worth living when you can see the goodness and move in the goodness and be in it, and walk in it, and share it. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. But outside, it is quite challenging. It is quite challenging. Believe me, everything has context. Even sickness has context, if provided you can see it properly. One of the things that frustrates us in life, whether Christian or non-Christian, things happen, we go, I don't know why this is happening. And what's meaning? I'm confused about this because I can't see it in what? Context. I can't see the use, the purpose. It has a purpose. But only light will allow you to see it properly. So you don't mislabel it, misjudge it, misrepresent it. Amen? So your church is there to show you when you look at someone or something and you go, this is hopeless. This person or this thing has no purpose or it will never change. The darkness will never pass. Find your local church. You can even charge them with it. You are the light. Show me the goodness. Should I stay in this situation like David had asked God? Should I pursue this job? Should I pursue this career? Should I go to school for this? Should I get married? Should I have children now? Amen. Your church is supposed to help you. Because what the church is supposed to do, she'll point you to the light, to God. She should point you to Christ. Amen. How to believe in Christ, how to follow Christ, so you can get the light she has. Remember, not the building, it's the church. It is the person where the light abides in and illuminates through. So she can show you the same way how Christ worked in her, how Christ dawned in her, amen, to bring day in her life, how you will dawn in you, abide in you, to give you light, to respond to the various challenge. And I know you have many things you have questions about. Every one of us do or did at some point. I'm a man of God, I walk in the light, but different things come, just like David was a man of God, I walk with God, and I have to ask God every day, how should I respond to this one? And, and I can't use memory, how I respond last week in Ziggler, it is not necessary how I respond this week in Ontario. It changes. So I have to talk to God all the time with the various happening. Amen? He's a living God, a conversational God, it's called communion. He says, stay in union, stay in my yoke and communicate with me and I will show you how to respond. If you should pursue or if you should withdraw, if you should stay or if you should leave. There's some situations and circumstances and place, some of you need to leave. In that darkness, you will never come to your full potential. Your life will never be effective and your time will expire. Now that's a real travesty. 
Every human being is a wonderful gift from God. You're here to do something properly, but it has to be done in the proper context, meaning in the proper time and the, and the right way and season. But you need light to do this. You need light. Some of you, you need to stay where you are. You're, you're being tempted because of darkness to leave it. Or leave the relationship or the circumstance or the condition or the ministry. No, you are where you ought to be. And you need light to know if there, that's where you should be and how to operate where you are. In Jesus' name. Amen. So find someone, amen, that, that belongs to God, that operates in, if you're, if you're the unchurch, in the light. And ask it, how do you respond so appropriately to these very challenging times or situations or circumstances? Mm -hmm. Their charge, part of the charge on the church, is to bring the light, amen, to the unchurch world. Go make disciples. This is their job. Not just to stay in the light is one part. And to shine is another part. But they have to bring it too. They have to share it freely. They have got it through Jesus. Freely they have to give it. Perfect. Hallelujah. So don't feel bad that asking them. If you see they're operating effectively like God. How? They have to. They're not allowed to wait all that the Lord will move upon them. Or not sure your blood will be upon their hand. You stumbling in darkness will be upon them. You'll be free. You'll still experience the effect. But God will forgive you because you asked. Amen? For light. And the light didn't respond. You'll deal with the light. You must guarantee you'll say if they won't respond, you'll deal with them, you'll discipline them, you'll send you light. You'll send someone else. Perfect. Amen? In the name. This is what, it is very important. Young church, understand. You must continue to pray for the church and thank God for the church. They're the lighthouse in this world to see things properly. Not necessary. No, please be clear. Not necessary. She's abiding properly. She's supposed to. I know. We don't always do it well. But nevertheless, she's the one assigned, joined to Jesus, that light can come through, that they can come through. There's a chance that she can point out the goodness in your life. As I said, sometimes it's hard to believe life will get better. When you're in a situation for a long period of time, just checking the time, making sure we're still in time. When you're in a situation sometime for a long period of time and season, you've been sick for so long, or you've been trying to get a new job and you can't get the new job, or your financial situation won't change for so long, amen. or you've been seeking God and, and, and you, you haven't been hearing Him, sometimes it's hard to go like, man, should I keep doing this? And God has put the church and the Holy Spirit to give you context, respond to that answer, that give you answer to that question. Amen. I always pray for the church that she will operate through the abiding power of God, that they will flow through her, and she will glorify God and benefit humanity in the name of Jesus. I'm excited about the church, and I thank God for the church. Amen. But I equally am excited, and my heart goes out, because I come from there, just like the old church come from there. We come from the darkness. We come from the unchurched. Amen. Jesus is head of the church. My heart goes out. This is God's heart that he, you know, he flows through all the church heart. That he wants to unchurch those in darkness come into light. Let me show you a little bit of God's heart just before I show you the fruits of light to wrap up this process. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Luke, the gospel. Luke. You know, Pastor Fraser, uh, in, in Romans 11, it says, Do not repay evil with evil. Mm but overcome evil with good. Yes. And I believe that many people, they have good in them. They want to do that, but they don't have enough light. They Correct. don't know how to do it. Amen. Because without light, you're going to pick the evil to repay evil. Yeah. And you think it's good. Yes. Because you can't tell yeah. bittersweet. Good. Correct. Yes. It's what the Bible said in the book of Isaiah chapter 5. They are Because they can't see it in proper, yeah. um, in its proper context, they're calling good evil and calling evil good. Yeah. And the reason they're doing this, they can't tell which is which. And if you ever, um, you know, been in, been in water or something, um, um, I'm from the West Indies and we have two kinds of water. We, we have like clear water, salt water, like, and we have like black water. And in the black water, if you put your hands on there, you can't see it. Because the water is too dark. Amen. Or if you've ever been in muddy water and you put your hands on there, you can't see. It is hard to tell what is good when you're in darkness and to tell what is evil. So you need to be in the light that you can make a clear distinction between the two. 
You know, it's hard to tell which decision I should make in any given situation that will help my life and my community and glorify God. But, uh, you know, I have, I, have a, I have a principle I live by. Everything I do, I ask God to let it be threefold, that, that it glorify God. It, may, it help humanity and it's good for me. It's going to be good for God, good for me, and good for others. This is the three contexts. So what my response to whatsoever, those are the happenings of life, they just happen, you can't control them, God assigned them. Amen. But a response is demanded. And by the way, just in case some of you, some of you are thinking, I won't respond, that is a response. Not responding to the demand it's is a response. response. If David don't respond and go after he have accept defeat from the Amalekites, family gone, village destroyed, children, everything gone, that is his response. You mean he praying to God, that's a response. So whether you respond, let's call it in an active way or a non-active way, nevertheless it is a response. You mean? Let's look at the book of um, um Luke. We want to look at Luke. You said Luke, didn't you? Yes, Luke. Luke chapter one. Uh, let's see which verse I want to pick it up from. We're going to read from... Let me read a couple of verses. Let's, let's read from verse 70, um, 74 to 79. I don't want to spend a lot of time, but I'll quickly move through this. 74 to 79, Luke chapter 1, verse 74 to 79. Amen, amen. Anyone following? I'll give you just a minute to get there. We're almost wrapping up. Amen. Being the light in the world. And this I'm speaking. Amen. The church, what, what is she doing? She, our job is to amplify the goodness of God. All God has done that is good. All God continues to do that is still good. Amen. She is the market, the marketing instrument God has to point that out. You know, you live in a world, sometimes when you turn on the television, you just want to turn it off. All you can hear is about the darkness, evil, on the news, the badness, the badness. Like there's no goodness. It makes you, you, you know, you, you feel like you just want this, right? Don't want it. There's so much depression, so much anxiety. But yet, in the midst of many of these tragedy and this, this, this tragedy, uh, I feel like I can't even speak anymore, all of the tragedy that is happening and all these, you know, these misfortunes, yet there's goodness. And the church is responsible to point out that goodness. And you are responsible to come into the light that you can see the goodness. Life is not just doom and gloom. There's more to it. There's God goodness happening. David had to find a way to stop looking for what has happened and what he can do about it. Mm. There are many situations you are in, but there's something you can do. The Bible said God don't let nothing come or happen to you that there's not a way to escape out. Perfect. Amen. There is a way to get out. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. There is a way to navigate through the water. So, so you have to stop sometimes listening to all these news and all these pessimists and all this neg negative and yoke yourself to Jesus. As I said, the only, the, only, the only weight of that yoke, you have to stay yoke and move with the light. But you will see the goodness. Who want to live 70 or 80 years or 60 years and all you can see is the ugliness. Why? Unless you're a sadist, that's no fun. I don't see nothing exciting about that. That's depressing. Amen. But you can navigate the mind field of life with light. And learn to step and live in the safe places that allow you to glorify God. Amen. And it's a small price to, to pay. Believe and follow. That's the yoke. You have to believe. You have to follow the light. Let's read quickly Luke um, chapter 1 verse 74 to 79. The Bible said, this is God granting man to grant us that we, amen, being delivered from the hands of our foes, amen, might serve him fearlessly in holiness, divine consecration and righteousness in accordance with the everlasting principle of right within the presence all the days of our lives. Verse 76 said, and you little ones shall be called a prophet, amen. Of the Mosai, for you shall go on before the face of the Lord to make ready his ways. So you, we, the, the human being, the Bible says we are made lower than the angel. Amen. A prophet is someone who knows the will of God, the things God is seeing, God is communicating to them, and they can tell what's going to come and how to navigate what, what David seek 
See, see God, God tell him, yes, go after the Amalekites. Yet you gain everything. Meaning those that know the will of God, how to deal with the situation, the circumstance, and the condition. In a sense, this is one of the wonderful things about God. Nothing God will let come in your life, amen, that he did not give you the ability to respond to. Mm -hmm. If it's coming your way, there's an appropriate way to respond to it. There's an appropriate way to overcome it, to navigate through it, to glorify God, amen, that you can live your highest life and it will benefit people. Of course, there's a way to the opposite of that. If you're away from God, you don't know to respond, you can't get through it, it overruns you, you're living in depression, amen. Verse 7 to 7 says, To bring and give the knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness and remission of their sins. Amen. Verse 78, Because of and through the heart of tender mercy and loving kindness of our God, a light from on high will dawn upon us and visit us. God said, Amen. He sent the light from up on high to come on what? Dawn and stay with us. For the church, amen, Christ lives in the church, in the people. And he makes day is the perpetual, their children of the day, the perpetual experience. They're still dealing with all the things the whole world is dealing with. But they have light because he dawned. And to the unchurched, the Lord is saying right now, wheresoever you are, he wants to come and dawn to make light be your responsive way. Amen. To deal with whatsoever come in your way. And believe me, as many of you have experienced, there's a ton coming your way. And there's a ton happening right now in your life. But what I know without light, you're going to have quite a challenging time navigating through in it correctly and to get positive effect. Amen. When you are getting constant positive effect, there's a high possibility you are respond to God, man, and life is so much better than when you are responding from a poor place meaning your spirit is down and your mind not operating properly and your emotions are not in the right state and your body and your health and your resource. Amen. Verse 79 said, The reason he come and dawns upon us and stay with us to shine upon and give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. So he said, I come to shine light so you stop living in darkness and in the shadow of death. Look what happened now. To direct and guide our feet in a straight line into the way of peace. He said, I come to give you light to stop living in darkness. Because from God's perspective, he said, if you're in darkness, you're in death. Because what you are doing does not promote life happening. It promotes more destruction. Mm -hmm. You're misrepresenting the moment. Your respond to the task that he's made you for is always what? Inappropriate. It doesn't make things better. It makes things worse. The situation here is terrible enough. But your response amplify it. See, so he said, I need to give you light to direct you, amen, in the path to peace. Where you are at peace. You and me are at peace. You're living with people at peace. Your future will be a peaceful future. A amen. This is why God said, I know the thoughts and the plans. One for, one for peace and your prosperity.